And I'm back. Back to coding. Back to coding. Coffee's gone. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, okay, so. Right, so we know that the chat button here needs uh, so this is where we're going to maintain the state of whether or not the dialogue is opened oh yes okay so let's it's, it's sometimes easier just to like write out the component a little bit further to see what you need to make things happen. So we know we're gonna have a button and that button is gonna be to like start to show the dialogue, right? And then we have a chat dialogue. There we go. And that has some things. Uh, that's, that's not what I'm after, but good try, Copilot. Um, So let's do this. Let's start with saying const open set open. There we go. We'll import use state from uh, React. And then we're going to do like a, yeah, handle open, handle close, sort of, except it's more going to be handle, yeah, handle open and the handle. Um, change right so this is like uh, yeah on change in chat in this component does doesn't feel quite right because it's much more final right if you have well I guess it's kind of like if you have a select drop down and you select something that's an on change but that selection process also closes the drop down same sort of idea uh, so we're going to open, it's open, um, we're going to pull in, let's see if we can do FC chat button props, and then we're going to destructure the props here, we need job, and transcript and context, and on change, yep, all the things. And then, yeah, all this goes away. And do something different. Context is context. Job is job. Transcript is transcript. Why is it called transcript? Is this overly specific? <laughs> I think it is. I, I do think that, um, like the details of like what we're passing in and how we're passing it in is, is a little too specific. What are we doing with transcript? Oh, I see. Right, so we're saying, here's what your job is. The user is gonna say, here's the video context and then the transcript. So a more generic version of this would a let would let you like provide some of this in props or or do something or yeah something but uh, it's it's fine for now this the the only real use case I'm trying to solve here has to do with the episode description um, the other layers are just to keep things a little a little cleaner and make it a little easier in the future to, to uh, adjust things. Okay, so uh, on chat is not on change. On chat is, um, okay. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna add, add a handle change. Uh, uh, handle chat. Uh, to do uh, 
except it's not content, it's really messages. Okay, so in this component, we also need to export this interface. Or maybe at some point, just like move this to a different file. So now from here, there we go. This is a chat message, right? And um, I guess we can also say that, hey, yeah, this returns a promise of that as well. to return something. Return uh, messages. There we go. That's all good. Now, so here on chat is handle chat. On change is handle change. all the props we need to pass in, right? So we're basically passing through uh, What do you mean? Oh, right, because I've not imported uh, FC. There we go. Catch up. Right, and then we, we, we're not using this yet, but we will. So handle open is the thing that should be called here. I would just pass that in as on click. And then handle change. So when things change, we first close the dialog and then we call on change. Uh, handle change needs to take in the content, which is a string. Like so. So this passes the message that was selected from the chat UI back up to the button inside here, and then we'll have to do something with that elsewhere. Uh, to do, call data provider to send messages and get response. So everything else in this component should now be done, except for the part where we actually call the backend. So soon, soon. Uh, and then chat dialog, I think we're done with this. This does everything it needs to do. And then, uh, uh, kind of done with the story stuff for now as well. So not edit.tsx. So this is the, the edit view here. We have our custom button here that calls chat button. Uh, and we need to pass in some props. Context. Is a something. Uh, job is a something. Uh, transcript is a something. And then on change, we'll have to figure out what that is actually going to do. So we'll let's see here. Const handle change content. To do not that, but to do something, right? We need to trigger an update of the underlying record, like AKA update the description field based on the contents of content. Uh, so like update, yep, exactly. Handle change. Okay, so this is where I wanna put in some details here. Um, this is also where we need to get um, some information to go, no, to do. Get uh, the, uh, I don't think we need the current description value. Um, 
the transcript from the stream. Yeah. And then context and job, uh, how is this supposed to work? Did I have, um, I don't have the original things that I was using for my test in here. So let's go back to here. Cancel. Okay. File, new window. Uh, open, recent, video processing tool. We'll go back to those files I was looking at before. Because I had such nice, um, there we go. I had already written out kind of what the job, the uh, context was going to be. I don't care about the transcript because we'll actually have the transcript. So we can, we can pretend though. So here we go. So. So the idea here, uh, what are we missing? I don't, I don't think anything really, uh, because chat button will open the dialog. Like at this point, if I were to click chat, dialog opens. It's nice. Uh, we we don't have a way to exit. <laughs> we don't have a way to exit the dialog. Uh, we should probably fix that. Uh, let's see. So inside a chat dialog, there is um, a prop that we can pass in. It's like uh, on close. So we're going to need on close as well. There we go. And then. Yeah, like, like that. So that then makes this broken. Uh, we need, I guess we need to handle close after all. There we go. So that lets us click out, dismiss it. Click the test. Or if I type test and click that and dismiss it and then open it again, it's still there, which is nice, maybe. Although we might need like a clear button to like reset the state. Uh, let's do that. That seems like a thing that could actually be very useful, especially in testing. Um, so we're gonna do, I guess we can do a close button and a clear button. So like so, and then we'll just implement handle clear. Yeah, so that resets, that sets messages to be the slice of messages that were the initial messages here. It discards everything else. Uh, although that's not safe, or it's not as safe as it could be. Really what you wanna do is you wanna pass in a, um, if only I could type, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. You want to pass in a callback, right? So this will, whatever the, like when you run set messages, it will look at the contents of the state and update it based on this function rather than relying on the content of the state at the point that, um, 
at a different point in time, I guess is, is, is maybe a way of thinking about that. The React docs are probably can say that much more clearly than I can at the moment. There we go, so now we have a send and a close and a clear. So we can clear, and we can close, and we don't have to rely on you knowing that you can click outside <laughs> to do that. Okay, so some UI improvements there. Uh, we still need to do this part. We need, still need to do this part. I think what's gonna be most interesting is doing the, um, the handle chat. So we're actually calling the API so we can actually do something even though we won't have the actual transcript. I think that'll be more fun to see after, you know, months of working on this, finally getting back to this. Uh, so data provider, we have things. I don't think I actually have something to call the AI endpoint in here. Nope, sure don't. Okay, so async. Um, yeah, that could be a thing. So let's see uh, AI slash main. All right, so we have an AI API. It's been a while since I've looked at it. API chat. Do I have anything that talks about API chat anywhere? Uh, and nginx okay so we forward slash api slash chat to the ai api so that it just works um i guess i'm just going to call this chat and i'll figure out exactly how it's supposed to work in a minute Uh, I think base URL has the slash API in it. So something like this will at least call the backend. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Uh, but if we go back here, so we need to post. And here is the backend code. Finally some Rust code. We're an hour and a half in. We got some Rust code, Rust code finally. Um, let's see, if we're gonna do a post, we need a second argument to fetch here. Yep. Uh, and then that. Although if this is async, I don't know why we're using a promise chain. Seems kind of silly. So result.json, this is a promise, but um, yeah, you don't need, you don't need return away. At least in this context, that's not going to do anything for you. Technically, if you, if you were trying to catch exceptions in the context of this method, like if we wrapped this in a try, then we could catch exceptions from result.json. Whereas if you if you tried return if you tried this and tried to wrap it in a try, um, the rejection and result that JSON I think would escape out of this function. If I remember how that works right. Anyway, I don't care. We're not really we're 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 doing a bad job of error handling uh, <laughs> or consistency for that matter because here's another promise chain, but. Uh, anyway, how does this API work? Well, we have a payload. It's a vector of simple chat message, which is a content and a role. It mirrors the uh, TypeScript uh, interface that we have, which is good. It'd be better if it was like auto-generated, but. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is we have this interface. I'm gonna take this interface and I'm gonna move it to the data provider. Um, and then I'm gonna import it, maybe. Or, or I'm going to, do I have a top level types file? I do. 
I'm going to put it here. And then, yeah, one second. Can I have a list of editors? There we go, chat button. This should be complaining that it doesn't have the uh, type anymore. Yep. We'll import that from our top level types file. And then chat dialog is also complaining because it doesn't know about the type now. We'll fix that. Keep that separated from our MUI imports. And then chat uh, is going to take messages, which is a chat message array. Yep. And it returns uh, a promise of chat message arrays, <laughs> uh, a, a chat message array. Uh, and then we just pass messages as an array, uh, which is unlike how I normally do APIs where I generally won't pass around an array of things. But in this case, that's what we're doing. Because it's a vec, so that'll that'll be deserialized from an array. Yeah. Here I say list, list vector array. They can they can mean the same thing. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so this does that. Now we have a data provider method called chat. And we just need a place to invoke it from, which is not here. It needs to be inside a chat button. Right here. Uh, so what we need is we need a handle on the data provider. Like so. Um... So things we are not doing here is showing like any kind of loading indicator, uh, any kind of error handling, any any of those things, which is fine because mainly, at least for now, this is for me. And at some point, we'll re rewrite it. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, honestly, I've not spent a lot of time working on this project, just a few hours here and there. And it's, uh, it does quite a lot for a little effort. That's how uh, it's nice <laughs> to have that like that. All right, so we just return, oh, well, yeah, we could return a wait. Uh, technically not necessary, we could just do this. That, that does a thing. Now let me open the dev tools here. I'll go to the network tab. We'll see a bunch of stuff, but if I click chat, Okay, um, we don't see anything yet. Let's clear all that. Test message. Send. Okay, there we go. So, OpenAI's API says, please provide a video transcript or context of the video so I can help create a title, description, and cleaned up version of the transcript. Uh, which is, this, this is me failing to read my own prompt because I'm pretty sure <laughs> that that is the correct thing, right? I summarize, well, let's make this bigger. I, the job of this this uh, button, right? This, this dialogue. I summarize the provided video transcript into a title and description of the video to optimize for finding this video on YouTube. Then uh, I provide, uh, comma, there we go. I provide a cleaned up version of the transcript that corrects for any errors in the transcription, right? So this, that like how I wrote this uh, is to do like three different things. Um, and I'm not prepared. I mean, I guess what I could do, like I can use this message, right? And the idea with that is I click that and that would fill in whatever response I get into the description. Uh, that doesn't help me though with what I'm trying to do here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to descope this. So we're going to, we're going to focus on this part. 
Ooh. So we have, now we have Copilot providing additional, <laughs> using Copilot as our prompt engineer. Okay, so I also provide a list of keywords that are relevant to the video. Okay, so let's do that. We'll throw that all into the description, maybe. Um, so the next things to do, uh, we need the context and we need the transcript. So, um, I think what I'll do is context. Yeah, something. We'll come back to that, but we'll we'll just like we'll use some string interpolation and build out the context, so we can do that instead of hard coding it here. Uh, and the transcript we'll we'll be getting from the stream. The first thing that we need to do though is actually get the record itself. Yeah, except we actually do like use record context like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could pull out the job too. It doesn't need to be embedded inside of. How is this different? Uh, it's the same thing. Good. We could do this as well. That way, if we want to like programmatically vary. Uh, Brainless says, to wake up and do some work or to keep sleeping, that is the question. Well, do you have to? <laughs> Sleep is good. Uh, I just drink some water. If we're talking about self-care, I should drink some water. I do technically have to work. Well, but do you have to work right now? What about later? <laughs> uh, okay, so, and then transcript will be the transcript, which is not record source, but a transcript it needs to be in. Curly braces transcript. I slacked the entire week. I need to have something ready for tomorrow's meeting. Oh no. Well, that is unfortunate. Maybe you've used this last this last week to like subconsciously process the thing, right? So you've actually been doing work <laughs> and now you just need to like materialize it. Eh, eh, no, maybe. Sometimes things just need a little thought. Okay, so we maybe have a record, although we potentially don't have the record. Yeah, there we go. So if we don't have a record, then we don't show the, the button. Um, and then we need, we need to get the stream. Uh, which we get by using the data provider. Hold on, there's a, there's a get one that we do elsewhere. There we go. Okay, and we need a data provider. Um, yeah, and we have to do that before, we have to do that before the if, because you can't have branches before hooks and components. Uh, Brainless says, I just need to do some minor tweaks to a PR and clean the code, but motivation has not been there and my finger is killing me. Well, it's not, it's not a good combination. Uh, one-handed typing. Uh, speech to text. Don't know. Do uh, you have someone you can pair program with? You can be the driver. Yeah, I don't think I want this to be an async function. What was I doing down here? Oh, I see.
That is uh, actually a pretty good idea for the people. I'm glad. Yeah, pairing is is good. You know, you know what they say: two heads is better uh, are better than one, right? And it's uh, sometimes you know working with someone else can help keep up motivation. So ID here is is going to be record stream ID. We don't use stream yet, but we will. We will we need to uh, set the transcript. Of course, stream transcript is not a thing. There's like I think it's like transcription segments. So what are transcription segments, actually? Let's go full screen here. Um, so it's some kind of an array of things. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of just break this out. Yeah, like that. And then the content. transcription segment. So it has start, end, and text. Um, for now, I might... Hmm. I might just take, to, take all the, uh, the text bits. Yeah, like that. And join them together. Brainless says, how are you feeling with the switch to Colmac after these uh, past months? I was practicing Dvorak yesterday. Still unsure if I want to keep learning that and go for Colmac or make my own variation. I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. It's getting better. Um, I have also been thinking, we were talking not too long ago about having like a, a top-down camera for the keyboard. I might do that. Um, I don't want... Like I have this this Logitech webcam that I have for other streams. I guess if I'm not on st like for these streams, I could j potentially just reuse that camera. But I have been thinking about getting a second camera. I have a way I can mount it on top of my my monitor post, so it could be above everything and look down. But I don't know what camera to get. Um, but yeah, with this keyboard, it's it's been going good. I've I feel more like it's um, getting closer to touch typing. I'm, I've like gotten more like muscle memory around like the layers for the arrow keys and numpad and those sorts of things. There's still a lot of stuff and layers that uh, I've not used at all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely better. I, I don't have any regrets. I think in the long term it will be, um, like a couple of months of, of annoyance is in itself, you know, it's not a bad thing. I think it's like, you know, something different, something mentally challenging that... <laughs> can be annoying but I, I'm, I'm mostly over and uh, I think I don't know it's it's hard to say uh, because I don't have good like word per minute numbers from before so like quantitatively it's gonna be hard to like assess that but uh, I don't feel bad about the, the switch I have positive feelings Now, I feel like I'm doing something wrong here with using data provider get one in this context. Let me go over to the React admin docs. I was trying to see a possible Dvorak variant where I use home row mod keys and only three rows, no number row. Yeah, I do still have the number row. It is a, it is a five row keyboard. Although, I don't think 
I don't, oh yeah, yeah. So the bottom row is like the control and that that is one thing. It's kind of weird having control and alt right next to each other. It makes it a little bit awkward to do like control alt combinations. I do have them on both sides and, and other things. So there, there's definitely some things that feel very awkward that if I figure out how I want to, like how to properly do them <laughs> and train myself on them, that would be better. Um, so there are things where uh, I could spend some time, some like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess if I had video <laughs> of me typing, that would be something that, because it's it's easy in the moment to feel that this is awkward, but I'm not gonna take the time to like, I, I have failed to take the time to note those things down. Um, something maybe to be more mindful of uh, myself. Now, what am I trying to do again? Also, that's cool. A little animation on this. Uh, data provider stuff, right? I'm trying to figure out how to use the data provider. Use get one. Here we go. This is probably what I want to do. Yeah, when the component mounts. Right, rather than using data provider, we do. Uh, what is this? Data is loading error refetch. So I'm gonna do something like this. And we're gonna say, uh, use get one. Yeah, I know, I need to import it. Um, and this is gonna be wrong. We, we do need options here. Enabled. Right, because we don't want to uh, run the query if, yeah, if there's no uh, record either. Uh, let's see. Like, th this is gonna this is gonna fail. Uh, I guess for that matter, um, boy, yeah, we need to do something like this and something like this to be safe. There we go. So if if there's not a record or the stream ID isn't present, then this is not going to even run. And then stream is going to be empty. So then, um, if not stream, we could return null. I guess that's fine. Um, this we're gonna just say, wait, 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 we have a type for this. Transcript segment, I think is the right type. Yeah, we're close enough. Okay, so this should get the transcript. The context, what is the context here? What, what do we want for the context here? Let's go back to the UI. Um, Maybe the stream name, or it's it's the title, the stream title. Um, maybe the stream. Uh, what what do we got here? The stream date, the stream title. Those would be kind of good things, right? So that's not the context. Although that's interesting. Uh, the context is I need help summarizing the video. Yeah, no. Uh, list of keywords. Uh, I wonder if this would help. Here's the transcript. Uh, yeah, that's how we do this, right? Greenlist says, 
Uh, I am maybe have been naive, but my aim is to increase my word per minute from 20 by by 20. So I'll increase to 20 with the switch. I'm a slow typist with only 60 words per minute due to having a horrible habit of using only four fingers to type. So I've been trying to learn Dvorak, focusing on proper finger placement. I mean, it's interesting because if you're if you're trying to break bad habits, or you're trying to like address things, I I feel like maybe like a different keyboard layout, like that might be the time to like look for a, a more optimal keyboard layout. Like if you're, this this, this was the, the motivation between, for me to uh, to switch to Colmac with the, key, the the new keyboard. Hey Lady Versailles, how's it going? Thanks for all the hearts. Um, but the, the motivation for switching uh, to Colmac as a keyboard layout was that I'm already gonna be switching to this, this 3D tinted split keyboard. So it's gonna be different uh, and it's gonna take some getting used to. Just throw a little bit more on there. Oh wow, Brainless. Thanks for the gifted sub to Lady Versailles. Brainless Society gifted a tier one subscription to Lady Versailles. You gifted five subs. Right, so I think this is good. I think um, uh, the the video is from a stream titled. There we go. Uh, the stream was recorded on. Is it recorded at? Do I have a type for stream? Can I can I give this a type? I don't have a lot of details here on this either, so maybe not. Not gonna bother. We'll just hope it works. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm gonna search for. Is it recorded at? No. Uh, we should be able to see in the UI. It's a uh, stream date. So that's probably what it's called in the data coming back. Yes. Okay, stream date. Just a little redundant because it's a stream record. Um, so that's some context. And then here, I think for right now, I'm just going to like console.log, the content, which is a string. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Okay, and then uh, we still have errors of some kind. Oh, we don't use source yet. We will, we will. And that's not gonna stop us from compiling. So let's bring this back over here, this over here. Fix this all up. All right, so if we go back to the episode. Something is undefined, whoopsie. What did I break? Get one. Line forty six. Wait, in in our code, uh, line fifty eight of edit that TSX fifty eight underscore A is undefined. Is it the return value from use get one? Is it, I mean, oh, record exists. Record stream ID also exists. Uh, I'm guessing the return value from use get one.
Yeah, stream is undefined. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, so underscore A refers to the second argument of use get one. And it doesn't like being undefined. So I'll think about that for a minute. Yeah, so that, that does that, although. Hmm. Like how how are we supposed to call this when Oh, that's supposed to be an object with an ID. I see. Uh, almost had it. Like so. So if you click chat, So the thing is, is right here, like we have all the things we want to send. I think maybe what I want to do is I want to make this like when the chat dialogue opens, we just send the messages we already have. Because like we have, so we have that job, we have the video context. I'm not convinced that I need this text that says video context here. Um, and then transcript. So I mean, for that matter, I mean, the idea here is I don't want to display the whole, like all these initial messages in the chat dialogue. I want it just like pre-baked, but I think I do want to essentially call send messages on mount. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So in that case, Yeah, so in that case, what I want to do is I want to do a use effect. If open, send messages, then set messages. Uh, when open changes. So we're gonna like reinitialize the, the chat history every time the um, dialogue opens. No, no, I think I just want this on mount. Yeah, it depends on messages and send messages. do if I do that I do need to pass in these two things well, I need to pass things in as you know making this dependent on them but then it's no longer happening on mount like if messages changes then the use effect happens again that's not what I want either thinking yeah 
Effects will only activate if the values in the list change. What if I make this less smart? <laughs> what if I make it so that I can send the, the, the message? What if I remove the disabled, right? So I can just submit as is. What's this complaining about? Oh yeah, we're not using use effect. That doesn't need to be there, right? So now I can send this. And we can see chat thinking. This is, so this is calling out to OpenAI's uh, GPT using up some of my tokens. Uh, you didn't provide any actual transcript to the video, but based on the information you gave, uh, here it is. So I didn't actually provide the transcript, uh, GPT says, but hey, I, I did give it the title of the stream, right? So um, that's a thing. I think I don't want to give it. Hmm. I think what I want to do is actually I want to use the title from the episode because the title from the episode is going to be generated from the title of the stream and then adding an episode number. And I don't know if I want, really want to do it like that, but at least it contains the whole stream and it has a sense of like, this is the third video of three videos from that stream, right? So the description generates, <laughs> journey with us on the 15th day of a super intensive Minecraft mod pack, GT New Horizons, where every recipe is grayified. In this episode, we delve deep into EBF and LV equipment, learn the ropes and get tips to survive, yada, 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 yada. It's not very interesting, but I uh, should see the uh, request here. Right, so this is where the transcript should be, and it's empty. Whoopsie. And this is the message that I sent, where I just sent the message without typing anything. Uh, so, a couple things, a couple things. Uh, one is, I want to change... Um, let's see, here... Right, so transcript should have stuff. Let's add a debugger. Line. And um, like because we should we should have the transcript before like even the button is rendered, let alone me clicking anything in the uh, to, to send it. And then two. Um, the the tentative title of the video is record that title. The stream was recorded on this date. Did that look right in the uh, recorded on? <laughs> yeah, a very precise timestamp. Uh, all right, so transcript here is empty. Transcription segments is empty. Is that because I don't have a transcript? Is that what's going on? That might be the case. That would explain things. Um, really what I should do here is I should say if there's no transcription segments, return null. We'll just not show the button. Uh, and that's not really good, but at least that... Okay, at some point it's gonna refresh and realize that the debugger line isn't there anymore. Yeah, the button's gone. Cool. All right, so uh, let's go to episodes and like, let's look at this episode that I've already uploaded. The button is there because we do have a transcript. If I click chat, and then I click send, 
stuff happens. 502. Response, bad gateway. <laughs> okay, I think the API maybe crashed. I'm gonna look into that and uh, probably wanna do that off camera anyway because there might be API tokens. But uh, I'll be back in just a couple minutes with some more all of this stuff. <laughs> BRB.